Hey friend, welcome back to the Sage Audio channel. Today we'll be looking into the prismizer effect and considering whether or not it can be used on instruments other than vocals. We'll be listening to some examples of the prismizer effect on vocals, guitar, drums, and some other instruments to hear how the effect sounds. So stick around for the full video, but first, if this is a topic that you find interesting, I'd highly recommend looking into the blog post that's associated with this video. You can find the link for that in the description box below. Also, if you're an artist, engineer, or producer, and you have a mix that you need mastered, send it to us at sageaudio.com. We'll master it for you and send you a free mastered sample of it. All you gotta do is set up this short account, upload the song, and we can do the rest. After the release of Bon Iver's 20 to a Million and Frank Ocean's Blonde, it became apparent that a new form of processing was happening. Now, this wasn't the autotune we had come to know from countless hip-hop and pop albums. This was something unique and entirely different. It didn't take long before the effect had a name, dubbed the prismizer effect, named after a prism's effect on any light that's shown through it. Word of the effect spread, but with little detail as to how it was accomplished. Now, curiosity only increased when a live performance of Bon Iver's Creeks was performed in 2017 for NPR. Now, despite a fair amount of time passing and a lot of speculation on the topic, the question, how is the effect created, wasn't answered for some time. Now, although we'll be delving briefly into how to accomplish the effect, detailing the steps, we'll be providing examples of the prismizer effect, as well as experimenting with it to see if it has additional applications. We'll be using it on vocals, guitar, drums, a string quartet, and piano. Although we don't expect the best results from all of these instruments, it'll be interesting to hear the results nonetheless. With each example, we'll be considering some of the potential uses for this type of processing outside that of the vocal. Additionally, we'll discuss why the effect works well for some instruments and not for others. And lastly, we'll cover how the effect can be improved in the future. First, let's look at the prismizer effect on vocals. Now, the prismizer effect is typically thought of as a vocal effect, but for the sake of experimenting and finding something new, let's just consider the term prismizer as the act of using the harmony engine with a MIDI recorder. Now, using a pre-recorded vocal, let's create an additional software instrument track. On this software instrument track, let's use the harmony engine Evo as a MIDI controlled effect. From there, we can change the input source to MIDI Omni and the sidechain setting to our pre-recorded track. We should now be able to control the harmonies added to the vocal via a MIDI controller. Now let's hear how the effect sounds when using just one note or one harmony at a time. I'm taking pictures off my wall I'm casually coming undone Next, let's try something a bit more complex and use a chord to create some harmonies. I'll be using a MIDI effect known as a chord trigger to create a chord with just one note for the sake of simplicity. I'm taking pictures off my wall I'm casually coming undone Next, let's add some reverb, a bit of delay, to create a great sounding and unique vocal. Now keep in mind that all of these effects are being used after the harmony engine is creating the harmonies. The reason being, the input to the engine needs to be as clean as possible for the harmony engine to work. Let's take a listen. I'm taking pictures off my wall I'm casually coming undone Next, let's look at the prismizer effect on guitar. Using the prismizer effect on the guitar is definitely a unique experience with a unique sound. Now, depending on the incoming signal, the sound ranges from a typical synth to a completely foreign and new guitar tone. Now, although the harmony engine can be used in a fixed mode on guitar to create a somewhat typical, if not slightly augmented chorus effect, using the MIDI controlled setting changes it completely. Now, just like with the vocal, make sure that the guitar recording is as clean as possible. For that reason, record the guitar as a DI or direct input signal, not from an amp or from an amp modeler. Additionally, try not to drive the guitar or cause any distortions, as this will affect how the prismizer interprets the signal. Now, although a single note performance will result in a cleaner signal, playing guitar chords results in a more interesting effect. Here is the sound of the prismizer effect on a guitar.
Next, let's listen to the prismizer effect on drums. Now, using a harmony generator on a drum track is certainly not the first thing a producer would think to do, but it's worth trying nonetheless. Now, using the Logic Pro X drum track as a source, the signal is being fed into the harmony engine in the same way that we've described in the previous examples. One difference to note is that when performing the prismizer effect on drums, the key of the harmony generation greatly affects the tonality of the generation. Now, when the key is lower, the drums almost sound gated, somewhat similar to a 1980s Phil Collins sound. But when shifted higher, the harmonies sound much more melodic, almost like a synth triggered by the drums. Additionally, muting the original signal makes the effect more pronounced. Let's take a listen. Next, let's listen to the prismizer effect on a stringed quartet. Now, of all the instruments and instrument groups tested with the prismizer effect, this is perhaps the most disappointing. And one would probably think that this effect would sound great on strings, yet the sound developed by the prismizer effect on this instrument is anything but pleasant. Now, for whatever reason, the harmony engine isn't capable of properly capturing the signal from a bowed string instrument without introducing significant distortion. Now this distortion causes the harmonies generated to sound like an improperly struck note, being both out of tune and shrill in its timbre. Now that's why we can't suggest using the harmony engine on this instrument group or individual instrument, unless for some dramatic effect. Now let's listen to a brief section of it, but not too much, because it truly doesn't sound too good. Lastly, let's consider the prismizer effect on piano. Now, although it seems like this would be an ideal instrument to add this effect to, using the prismizer effect on piano has mixed results at best. Like the violin quartet, a fair amount of distortion is caused when applying the prismizer effect. The harmony engine can't seem to capture the notes in time to adequately create the harmonies. The plugin will either create distortion or out of key harmonies even when the correct note is being played, or it simply won't create a note at all. Now, playing these harmonies will also introduce phase cancellation that, as you can imagine, doesn't blend in well with the original signal. Let's take a listen to it. Although this can't be said with absolute certainty, the most likely reason why the prismizer effect doesn't work as intended for some instruments is due to the Antares Harmony Engine Evo's inability to process and recognize timbres that vary greatly from vocals. In other words, certain ADSRs aren't compatible with the engine. The attack and decay of instruments definitely affect how the engine can pick up on incoming signals. Now, perhaps there are certain timbres that the engine can't interpret without causing distortion, as the main intention of this plugin is to detect and generate vocal harmonies. Hopefully in the future, the engine itself will be improved and will be able to easily detect timbres that vary greatly from vocals. When this does happen, the harmony engine and the prismizer effect will have a lot more applications and can be used more creatively. So these are our thoughts on the prismizer effect. What do you think? Leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Also, again, definitely check out the blog post where you can find a lot more information on this topic and others like it. There's a link in the description box below. Also, if you're an artist or an engineer, send us one of your mixes at sageaudio.com. We'll master it for you and send you a free mastered sample. All you gotta do is set up this account, upload the song, and we can do the rest. But thank you so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like and share this video with your friends. This way we know if you'd like to see more videos like this one. Also, you can subscribe to the channel. We release new videos every week and subscribing is the best way to stay up to date. There's a comment section where you can leave your thoughts on this video or a suggestion for a future video. And again, if you're an artist or an engineer, and you have a mix that you need mastered, send it to us at sageaudio.com. 
We'll master it for you and send you a free mastered sample. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.